Okay, assalamu alaikum and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being here this evening. Today, we are pleased to welcome Dr. Zamari, a very special guest from Malaysia. Dr. Zamari Zainal Abidin is a radio astronomy researcher who focuses on uh, exploring the fundamental and application of deep space astrophysics and solar astronomy science. He has been a physicist and lecturer at the Department of Physics, University of Malaya since 2005. After graduation from the Jordan Center Astrophysics at University of Manchester, and together with Dr. Zain Labdin Ibrahim, he established the Radio Cosmology Research Lab Group, which is the first and current only radio astronomical research group in the country. Among his responsibilities are the chair of the radio astronomy group for the South Asia Astronomy Network since 27, national representative for the radio astronomy frequency committee in the Asia Pacific region and the head of the Malaysia East Asian Observatory Concept since 2019. Recently, he has the head the position of the deputy team at the Faculty of Science in the University of Malaya. Today, he is going to talk to us about the Radio Astronomy Telescope. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in the welcoming our guest speaker, Dr. Zamari. Dr. Zamari, actually, it's so good to have you here, and uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, joining us. You heard me, right? Yeah, so I can start now, right? Okay. All right. So um, thank you, uh, Dr. Isra, uh, for the kind introduction. Um, so uh, I would like to say in general, thank you for the invitation. Uh, thank you, Dr. Isra, uh, for the invitation. Uh, and also thank you, Dr. Ihan, uh, who is the Deputy Dean of Institute of uh, Technology at your university. Thank you for having me. So uh, <clears throat> when, uh, when I was um, I proposed to give a talk, um, in the beginning, I didn't know what to give uh, as a title. Okay, so I discussed with Dr. Isra. So in the end, uh, I would like to share about my knowledge on the technology part of uh, this research okay so the most important part of the technology part uh, or section of this uh, research is telescopes or radio telescopes or to be more precise radio astronomy uh, telescope okay so throughout this uh, uh, pre uh, talk okay or seminar if you like uh, I will go through some introduction, some history of uh, knowledge as well as astronomy and then radio astronomy in general, okay, before I go to uh, what are the uh, uh, instruments that researcher needs for radio astronomy. And then uh, I will also talk a little bit about my research group in Malaysia. Okay, uh, and also what is our uh, future okay, for radio astronomy in Malaysia. So I will not be able to represent radio astronomy in the world. Okay, so uh, I can only say about the radio astronomy in my uh, group, okay, in Malaysia. So I have uh, prepared uh, quite a lot of slides here. So if I take too long. Okay, so Dr. Isra, you can, you can warn me and stop me. <laughs> okay, so, uh, okay, I can start um, now. Hopefully not too long. Dr. Zamri, the, you, you actually slide. can take your time. Take your time, please. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, so now uh, I have to, okay to uh, talk a little bit about why this research field is important, mainly because of knowledge, okay? Uh, and then because of the 
big research field in this uh, science is astronomy. Astronomy has been very important in human uh, civilization. Okay, because I call it due to community. Okay, community means common, means that it looks at the same sky. Okay, so everybody has interpretation, everybody uh, can learn from each other about science. So you can see in this slide here, uh, I'm sure all of you know this. Okay, this is just a summary that back until on records, the Mayan civilization, the Egyptian created and used a lot uh, of this uh, calendar. Okay, and then the Babylonians, uh, also Greek astronomers trying, uh, starting to use uh, maths, trigonometry. And then you also know Arabic astronomers contributed very heavily to science, including Al Hazen, Al Biruni, and so on. Okay, and then uh, later on, uh, Kepler, okay, also study uh, astronomy for calculus, for gravity. And then we have much later Einstein. Uh, and then the latest one is Karl Jansky, who discovered uh, the detection of astronomical radio wave, which is the base for this for my presentation okay this leads to the evidence of the general relativity okay so the true nature of gravity all right so uh why radio astronomy uh, has been uh, discovered very late mainly because we cannot see instruments to observe uh, uh, radio signals okay because radio signals are generated through if you see on this slide, uh, this is one example of how radio uh, wave from the sky, from the space has been uh, produced, okay? Through the interaction between uh, relativistic particles, okay? Like electrons or, or proton, uh, which spiral around magnetic field, okay? Creating this radio wave. So you can see there's no uh, object burning here. Okay, there's no heat here, so you only need magnetic field and some plasmatic condition to produce this radio wave. So this is the non-thermal synchrotron emission. Okay, so uh, it's, it's very late uh, in our civilizations that we can uh, see radio wave. So it's called invisible light. Okay, so if it's invisible, okay, if we can see it, what what would it look like? Okay, so you can see in this uh, slide here, uh, I just jumped to radio astronomy, which is on the left. This is uh, uh, an image of how uh, uh, radio waves are being uh, uh, produced okay, in radio astronomy. So you can see there's other um, wavelength as well in the electromagnetic spectrum. So you can see for comparison, optical is in the middle there. And then uh, radio is on the left. You can see in the center of this uh, galaxy, uh, we can learn more uh, structure in the middle. If you compare to optical, there's nothing there. It's too bright. Okay, radio can resolve it. Okay, So we can understand more about this galaxy. Okay, So you can see there's many wavelength so why why is uh, why am uh, why are many people uh, studying radio instead of infrared and ultraviolet x-ray okay so the answer is in the next slide is because only optical a little bit of infrared and radio wave can reach ground level Okay, so the other uh, wave reflected by the atmosphere. So only radio wave is alternative to optical wave okay, in, in studying uh, astronomy. Okay, so uh, a little bit of history of radio astronomy itself after Karl Jansky discovered radio wave. Uh, a few years later, Groot Reber met the radio Milky Way, our galaxy, uh, the first time ever. 
And then uh, radio wave was discovered uh, seven years after that. Uh, and then uh, people, humans, uh, study the spectrum of radio bursts from the sun. Uh, and then throughout the years, many more uh, radio galaxies have been discovered. Okay. And then comes the golden age of uh, radio astronomy. Uh, Quasi-stellar radio source, okay, the furthest object can be detected by human, Koiza, was discovered. And then the cosmic microwave background was discovered in 1965. Uh, evidence for the Big Bang theory, okay, the scientific uh, uh, theory of the, uh, of the origin of the, the universe, okay. Uh, and then we have uh, pulsar discovery 1968, another very important milestone. And then uh, very late on, uh, also the mazes, okay, the tracer that we can use to study uh, how stars are being formed and how, how they move uh, towards each other and so on in star forming regions. Okay. So these are the early history of uh, radio astronomy. You can, you can see it's 1969 is the latest there. So there's much more after that. So the bigger picture here is what can we learn from radio astronomy? So far, uh, what we have learned is uh, studying about uh, many concepts in science, including black holes, uh, and then the shape of the Milky Way, okay, uh, about dark matter, okay, the mysterious dark matter, and then how uh, the universe reionized itself in the beginning, and of course the Big Bang model, uh, and then a lot, many uh, plasmatic molecules have been discovered uh, through radio astronomy, so uh, human scientists can learn about uh, plasma naturally, Okay, they don't have to produce in the lab, so they just observe in the sky to learn about these molecules. Pulsar also uh, important knowledge in radio astronomy where people can study uh, general relativity. And then later on, gravi gravitational lensing. And then as you all know, uh, black hole was imaged for the first time uh, about two years ago by the Event Horizon Telescope, which is a huge milestone for knowledge. Okay, not just in radio astronomy, but in science. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I want to focus for this talk is the technique used in uh, radio astronomy. Okay, so I share with you this slide because this shows uh, the detector that is used to detect radio signal. Okay, this is in general. Okay, this is in general. You can see there are many types of receiver. Okay. So they are different because um, radio waves are being produced by human at different frequencies, okay? And different gain, different power, if you like, and different direction, okay? So uh, all have to be designed specifically. You can see there on the right, A, in the bracket A is the, for TV, okay? For television. And then we have B also or television for multiple um, uh, frequencies, okay, and and go and so on until J. If you see J is for car, the antenna for the car, okay. So they're all very different, okay. So but for radio astronomy, okay, is we have a specific type of tele, uh, uh, receiver that we use, okay, mainly because the fact that um, we have to design the antenna according to the frequency, the receiving frequency. So the, the thumb rule here is higher frequency, shorter antenna length, okay? So this is antenna length equivalent to wavelength, okay? So the longer the wavelength, the antenna have to be longer, okay? Uh, so you can see the wavelength, so this is basic physics. So uh, as you go in higher frequency, okay, so the wavelength shorter, so you have to build the antenna smaller and smaller and smaller. 
So uh, this also shows the band in frequency for radio. So uh, you can see how small W band is, okay? So the, the advantage of small antenna is, is easy to make, but to collect data, to collect signal is very difficult, okay? Because it is open to many other disturbance, okay? So that's the way around it, okay? So the way around it in astronomy, we use large collecting area where we focus the signal onto that short antenna. Okay, for that, we need parabolic dish. Okay, so you can see here uh, examples of radio telescopes. So the first one is uh, one of the first big, it was the big, biggest telescope at that when they were built. It's 76 meter in diameter in Lovell Telescope in, the, in England. So I did my PhD there. So I was uh, lucky enough to be uh, studying near that telescope. And then you see the second telescope, Effelsberg Telescope. So the size is 100 meter. That's a football field, okay? soccer field uh, length. Okay, in diameter. So I also collected my data from Effelberg Telescope when I did my PhD. Uh, and you can see even uh, the Green Bank Telescope, okay, 100 meter telescope, also 100 meter, same uh, size as Effelberg Telescope. And then, as you know, we have the 305 meter Arecibo Telescope on the bottom left, which has unfortunately have been destroyed, okay, and it's not operational anymore. But we have a bigger telescope, even bigger telescope. The biggest telescope in the world now is the fast telescope in China, 500 meter. So if you measure from side to side, it's 500 meter. That's how huge this uh, telescope is, this radio telescope, okay? So all of them collected radio signal and focused on very short antenna. Okay, so that's how we compensate with uh, the short length uh, antenna. Okay. So um, there are a few types of uh, telescopes for parabolic type telescopes. So uh, the most uh, popular one is uh, the Gregorian type, which is on the left here, the far left, uh, which many telescopes use this Gregorian, okay? Um, let me try to get the pointer. Um, One second, I need to find. Anyway, so on the left here, if you can see my mouse here, we have the Gregorian telescope, which uh, the signal is reflected once here, and then reflected again until the green part here, which is the detector, okay? So uh, this type of reflector, okay, this is uh, in optics, you have this concave secondary reflector. It will be reflected to the receiver here. So this is Gregorian. Many telescopes here, the FAST telescope, Effelsberg, Arecibo, all uses Gregorian, which was first invented. And then secondly, it was, Cass uh, uh, Green was uh, invented the convex reflector. So some radio telescope uses this, uh, for example, the Greenland telescope, okay? But uh, the best type of radio telescope is actually uh, the primary focus, okay? So the, the signal reflected only once, okay? And then detected by the receiver here in the green part here. So the off-axis or offset feed Okay, it's uh, popular with the green, green Bank Telescope here on the, uh, on the picture here. Uh, and also, um, similarly, the axial feed, which is not off-axis, uh, 
offset is in the middle. Okay, so uh, this is for example the Sardinia telescope. Okay, so these are the different types of uh, parabolic dish. In fact, actually many telescope uh, combine the primary focus and secondary focus. They they uh, install the receiver on the reflector here. Okay, so some Gregorian and Cassegrain have uh, have detector on the primary focus and secondary focus. Okay, so these are the types of uh, parabolic dish. Okay. All right, so uh, after the signal has been collected, uh, you can see in this picture here, in this cartoon here, uh, the signal uh, is mainly converted to voltage and then carried by cables uh, to control room, which uh, the signal is received by a particular receiver, which only enables certain uh, frequency band. Okay, uh, and it has to be amplified because radio signals compared to radio astronomy signals compared to, te to telecommunication uh, are very small. Okay, so it has to be amplified and then uh, store or recorded by a computer. Okay, then it will be analyzed for uh, astronomy uh, purposes. Okay, so uh, this is a broad diagram of the what's inside the receiver. Okay, so you have from the antenna on the left, uh, the signal will go through pre-amplifier and also have mixer, which is being combined, is, uh, which combined uh, from oscillator, mainly to down convert the signal, okay, the frequency to a frequency that can be read by computers. Okay, so we need uh, intermediate frequency amplifier we have detector, all, all this, after this, is all the analog digital converter part, uh, and then it will go to recorder. So this is called uh, heterodyne receiver, or this is a simple, super heterodyne, total power radio telescope. Okay, so uh, I, I won't go too deep into this because there are many types, because uh, according, uh, it depends on what you want to do. Okay, if you want to study magnetic field, uh, you have to have uh, polarization detectors here, okay? So you have to have the Stokes and so on. Okay, but this is the most simple broad diagram for a radio uh, astronomy receiver. Okay, so next is, uh, okay, so because of the similarity between radio, radio astronomy instrument with radio telecommunication, there are a lot of um, spin-off okay, from the technology of radio astronomy because of the need to detect very faint radio signals. Uh, radio astronomers have been uh, studying amplifiers and uh, tracking these objects. So one of the most important discovery from radio astronomy is the Wi-Fi, okay, the internet that we use now, okay, the, the, the hotspot. Okay, the wireless connection is actually uh, efforts originally by radio astronomers. So they wanted to cancel up the interference okay, around their instrument. So they produce a microchip that can uh, produce uh, radio signals that cancel out this uh, interference. So uh, indirectly, okay, they invented Wi-Fi. Okay, so uh, that's another thing very important in radio astronomy is the spin-off technology. Okay, next is how do we quantify the sensitivity of radio telescope? So to quantify that, we need the we need to know the resolving li limit of the radio telescope, or other words, angular resolution or re resolution power. So if you see in, in this uh, slide here, the two block, yellow block is actually, they are stars, okay? So in order for you to look at the stars so that you can differentiate the two stars, 
the theta, the angle that it makes must go through from this one source to the other. So the smaller it is, the more, more sources can be seen, okay? So the theta here, this is a formula, wave 1.22, the factor times wavelength over diameter of the telescope. So the bigger the telescope, the more sensitive the telescope is, okay? So you can, it can be represented by, technically, by the, uh, the antenna pattern, which is given down there. Okay, so uh, lambda over D, okay? The smaller it is, the more sensitive the telescope is, okay? So um, one problem is that if you want to, the telescope to be very sensitive, the diameter has to be very big. But what is the limit? Okay, if 500 meter fast telescope in China, that costs a lot of money. Okay, you, you don't want to go, you don't want to build bigger telescope. But in radio astronomy, there is a trick, okay, to save, to save costs. Okay, so on the left here is the antenna pattern for a single dish uh, telescope. So using the optic technique, which is interferometer, okay, so you can see the picture here. Uh, we can combine two radio telescope. Okay, uh, instead of look, uh, increasing the diameter, we increase S here. S is the separation. So what if we do this? We combine the interference, okay, uh, pattern. Okay, this this is good interference because we have the constructive interference. You will get this interferometer pattern. So it's more sensitive than the single antenna power pattern. Okay, so lately uh, radio astronomers has been using this technique. So we built a medium sized uh, radio telescope and then we have a separation over long distance. You get very sensitive uh, telescope okay? system. So the next big issue, okay, if you have this, uh, uh, if you use this technique is when you combine the two telescope, it needs very big computing uh, computing ability, okay? Which is the correlator to combine the data. Usually the data has a lot of data. Uh, and then how do you combine it? Okay, so this is one picture here, which is a single dish correlator. No problem, only the bottom part here is a correlator. Uh, the others are uh, the clock, atomic clock, and also the, um, uh, the control system, but for VLBI, for interference technique, you, you need very high computing power. Okay, so uh, radio astronomy has been uh, in many countries, including Malaysia and Australia, for example. Um, radio astronomers uses a lot of computing power. Okay, so contributing to uh, to the development and usage of computing power in the countries, okay, which is very important uh, for the country. So this technique is called very long baseline interferometer technique. So radio astronomers have been uh, utilizing this instead of uh, building large uh, dish antenna. So you can see there are many uh, smaller dishes antenna. You can see 25 meter. Karlsjansky antenna, okay, many 25 meter or many 45 meter in India, 12 meter Alma in Chile, 12 meter for SKA and multiple radio telescope for the event horizon telescope, all much smaller than 100 meter. So this is a way forward, okay. All right, so interferometer itself, okay, for single dish, it's very, very famous for producing the Wi-Fi for interferometer because it increases the resolution, okay, or imaging quality. It's been used in the medical uh, field, okay. Uh, the most famous is the invention of the magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, okay. Uh, and also the technique itself, okay, the computer part of the uh, VLBI was used in computer-assisted tomography scan. Okay, so the next uh, picture.
picture here is a picture of the CAT scan, okay, MRI CAT scan. So it's been used to scan inside the head, okay, inside the skull. So they're all uh, interferometer uh, spin off technology. Okay, so next is the astronomy itself. Okay, uh, radio astronomy also contributed to climate research, especially on the effect of the uh, the solar energy, because solar flare can produce very uh, strong, uh, very strong. Uh, what I call it? Um, uh, very energetic particle that can disturb the magnetic field of the earth okay so when you study magnetic field okay you can do radio astronomy to see the effect okay so uh, radio astronomy also contributed to climate research okay so the actual radio astronomy data it looks like this okay it's nothing fancy okay but this is your data before you convert to uh, image that you can when you analyze it so that you can have signs on it okay so you can see a lot of interference here on this picture here so we this is raw data so you have to get rid of the interference you can have to find pattern okay and then you have to correlate to other frequencies x-ray optical uh, and then you have to find the, the trend in it okay so this is the raw uh, radio astronomy data so this is what we do in our lab in Malaysia. So uh, I'll talk a little bit about my lab, okay? what we do in my research lab. Uh, so the research lab name is uh, Radio Cosmology Research Laboratory. Or, or, uh, originally, it was called Radio Cosmology Research Group okay? uh, in the University of Malaya in Malaysia. So it's established in 2005 when I, I came back from my PhD. Okay, so this is uh, the list of members. Okay, so uh, uh, many of them still in UM, but some of them uh, already graduate, graduated. Uh, used to be a lecturer in uh, my university, uh, but we stick in touch and we do some work together. Uh, Dr. Jazil from Al Narain University in Iraq, not so far from you. And there, Dr. Isra, okay, uh, I put her name there. I asked her permission to show this, she said, okay. And Dr. Abbas, also my former PhD student uh, in, from Nigeria. So all of them went back to the, un the university to teach. Uh, and then we have a PhD students, seven PhD students uh, at the moment, uh, some uh, uh, five PhD students, seven master students. And we have many collaborators in uh, Malaysia itself. And also international, we have many uh, organizations that we collaborate in, in China, in Taiwan, UK, Korea, Thailand nearer to us, Egypt also, and also Taiwan. So hopefully one day we can have official collaboration with, uh, with uh, your university, okay, in Europe, okay, your, your middle technical university, hopefully. So a little bit on the science goal. So what we want to do in the lab is to look at protecting radio astronomy frequency. This is very important because uh, many uh, radio telecommunication uh, uh, companies okay, are using all the frequencies, including radio astronomy frequencies. Okay, It is not good for us. Uh, so we need to protect that. And then I will go later on on the uh, deep space physics, I call it, okay, outer space beyond the sun, uh, and also the sun. Okay, we study the sun at radio wave. Okay, so I share a little bit on the history of uh, astronomy in, in my university. So you, you don't have to look <laughs> into all this. So you can see the words in red fonts, all my collaborators. Uh, from 2005, we started a few groups. Uh, okay, let's move forward to pre present. So we, we have a radio telescope that we want to maximize. We have few um, projects on solar astronomy. 
we have the interferometric HWDA half wave dipole antenna. We have one half wave dipole antenna in Malaysia, but we want to do interferometer with uh, many countries. And then uh, we also have a, a project on solar terrestrial, uh, as well as uh, we're a bit ambitious. We want to put uh, an antenna on a satellite. So uh, we are looking into that uh, to put an antenna on a nano satellite okay, for solar study. So, for, uh, we, so we are exploring that now. So in future, we want to do interferometry, interferometry radio astronomy with a telescope in China and Australia. Okay, so that's the past, present and future. Uh, again, this is the interferometer uh, members that we want to be part of. So uh, I won't go into too deep into this, but the main point here, we, we have started uh, to test the road, okay, to test the internet between uh, Malaysia and China. So we will continue to test, to do more tests on this. Uh, so this is all preparation for VLBI, very long baseline interferometry from Malaysia to China. Uh, who knows, maybe one day to Iraq. So, uh, so this very quickly, we have two sites where we have built a radio telescope and we will build a radio telescope. The site that we have built a radio telescope is uh, label number two. And the one that for future is uh, site number one. So this is site number one. Okay, this is a picture of where we want to uh, construct a radio telescope. Uh, this is the type of radio telescope that we want to build. Okay, we have uh, we have found a, we have signed an agreement with China to get this telescope, uh, which can be used for geodesy and uh, astronomy at the same time. Okay, so this is example. It's not the picture of the telescope. It's not been built yet. So this is we talk about frequency in the beginning. So this is the frequency that we want to. Um, uh, we want to build the receiver. So it's at 4.8 gigahertz and 6.7 gigahertz. Those are frequencies for uh, star uh, formation studies. So uh, I included this uh, Kirchhoff law. Okay, I can skip this. So uh, we know uh, through uh, quantum, Okay, that uh, certain uh, molecules uh, absorb or emit certain spectral line. Okay, so that's B and C. So the normal uh, image is A, continuum spectrum here. So, uh, so mostly gas, okay, cloud or gas. What type of gas? Uh, different type of gas produce different absorption line and emission line. I'm sure you know this. Okay, so some uh, publication, so as early as 1970s, uh, been studies on this. So this example is for Medihide line. We have also uh, absorption line, okay, for Medihide. And then we have uh, water maser at 6.7. So the our frequencies for the telescope. Uh, and then we already have a publication. This is in the yellow box. It's a publication by my student. Okay, we have publication on this. So we are ready to use the telescope when we uh, build it. So this is example of what we're going to have, okay, the raw data absorption and emission line. Okay, of course, like I said, we need to analyze this data. So we will look at uh, star formation, basically. So this is one of the science goal to, uh, to study the mystery of the mechanism uh, in star formation regions. Okay, I will skip this, it's a bit technical. So this is a telescope that we already have. Uh, we built into start building in 2012, uh, and then we have now um, very at the very end to get the first uh, signs from it. Okay. So the frequency is H1. Okay, uh, a little less complicated because uh, it's not as uh, complicated as the formidable height and uh, in the in the measure. Okay, so. This is the first light that we have uh, obtained. Okay, so we have made a preliminary uh, study on and off uh, the sun. So we managed to uh, 
to prove that the telescope is working. Okay, so another part is uh, of the research is solar astronomy. So this we are we built a, a antenna uh, for solar astronomy, uh, and there are many other antenna around the world similar. So the frequency is much lower. Okay, so I show you this type of antenna. Okay, in the yellow box there, Yagi Uda antenna. So you can see that uh, there are many elements, or directors we call it. So this is not the one that we built. The one we built has different length, okay, of the antenna of the directors. So uh, because we need to cover bigger frequency, okay, forty-five to eight hundred seventeen megahertz. Uh, what is this? Okay, so this is continuum spectrum. So this is not uh, the uh, absorption or emission line. So it's much direct. So this is how it look like. Uh, solar astronomy uh, at uh, low frequency uh, solar bursts, we call it, okay, to study solar activity. We have a few publications. Okay, I will, I'll skip this. Okay, we already have quite, quite a few publications using this uh, for this uh, research. Uh, and like I mentioned in the beginning, um, the lower the frequency, Okay, the longer the antenna, so you can see this antenna is much longer, and this is even half wave dipole. It's not even full wave, so it's enough. Half wave is enough. Okay, we can we can see the other part of the wave when we analyze it. So this is uh, the half wave dipole antenna that we that we uh, constructed in the university. So this is preliminary result, and we have published this result as well. Okay, to show the uh, capability of this antenna. This is another project with a, a national radio, uh, National Research Institute of Astronomy and Geodesy in Egypt with Professor Taha. Uh, Dr. Israq knows him, I think. And then um, uh, this is for earthquake study. Okay. So uh, Malaysia is not really on uh, uh, the fault line, but we are very near Indonesia. Okay, so we, we experienced a tsunami. So this is a problem for us. So I, I went into this research. Uh, so in short, we combine the signal received from uh, Malaysia and also our collaborator in Italy to pinpoint the seismic epicenter Okay, in the picture down there. So we have we have uh, published this work. Okay, we are writing more papers on this. Okay, so uh, we have uh, so far I've shown you uh, our our telescope, but we also have produced uh, publication with other telescope. Okay, uh, in fact, the first telescope that we publish work with is the Jodrell Bank Telescope. And then we have the ALMA telescope and uh, other uh, databases from other telescopes. So all of this have been um, uh, what we have written, the, the boxes in red, we have published in blue, we are on the way. Actually the last one here, it's been accepted already, okay, on the bottom right. Uh, okay, so I should highlight this also. This is uh, the work, uh, excellent work by, by Dr. Isra, so she has produced two papers, okay, uh, very good papers, okay, so uh, she uses uh, the telescope, the ALMA telescope in Chile, and also the two mass telescope, which is a combined effort from the USA and Chile, okay, so uh, we've shown that we, we, the group, okay, as a whole can, can use uh, other telescopes uh, to to do research. So if we have our own telescope, then then it will we will have n user. Okay. So hopefully we have uh, Dr. Isra can use our future telescope and also maybe some of you here if you are, if you have any ideas to use telescope. So please uh, in the future you can use the Malaysian telescope. We also have some theor uh, theoretical work where uh, we don't. Uh, we don't actually use any data uh, in dire uh, directly, so uh, more programming and uh, using codes, uh, studying uh, theories, 
So these are dark matter candidates. Uh, so we use programs to study this. Uh, and lastly, we have uh, the Event Horizon Telescope, which is a member of our group, Dr. Juan Carlos, uh, who is a part of the Event Horizon Telescope. Okay, I'm sure you know about this uh, project. And we have other publications, mostly in interference study, in the formation uh, of antenna arrays, and also some uh, solar flare study. Okay, I, I, maybe I can skip this. So these are the topics, the hot topics in radio astronomy. Uh, one is uh, dark matter. Okay, I will jump this. Uh, star forming regions. Okay, things that, that the science that we want to do with our telescope. Uh, cosmic web. Okay, one of my students doing this. So this is the biggest uh, structure in the universe. Okay, so uh, the theory goes that um, the universe is made out of web, okay? And the filament between them connects the uh, web uh, and at the intersections, we have the galaxy clusters, formation of galaxy. And then this is quite interesting, the mysterious fast radio burst, okay? Which no one, has, uh, no one knows what it is. Okay, there are many uh, theories. Okay, so uh, I have a student doing on this. So the latest uh, candidate for the fast radio burst is uh, Magnetar. Okay, so we will uh, install a receiver on our telescope in the future to study the fast, the mysterious fast radio burst. Okay, we don't know where it is. It might be from the, the near near the sun or sun-like uh, uh, signals we don't know or maybe aliens okay we don't know okay but it's very interesting and of course the black hole okay there are a lot more to study on the black hole and solar as well solar radio astronomy is very very new a lot of things we don't uh, understand yet about uh, solar radio signal from the sun okay so this is a summary of what we are doing in the lab so from the bigger structure which is cosmic web we look at galaxy cluster, which in return we look at galaxy, which has black hole in the middle. And then uh, galaxy cluster and galaxy, we can study dark matter. And uh, the sun is in the evolution track of, uh, of uh, uh, stars. And of course, uh, the evolution track starts with star forming region and ends at pulsar or fast radio burst or the black hole or AGN jet. Okay, so this is uh, in Malaysia. Uh, we we, we uh, starting to use the East Asia Observatory. Okay, we can use other people's telescope. So we have agreement to use their telescope. Uh, so uh, again, I welcome any of you to, to, to discuss with me if you have ideas what to observe. And of course, like I said, we have our own telescope in the future. So we have the agreement. You can see the picture there. There's an agreement with Shanghai uh, Astronomical Observatory that they are uh, um, helping us construct the telescope. Uh, you can read about the astronomy research in Malaysia um, in this uh, Nature Astronomy uh, paper that I have uh, co-authored. Okay, so I will share the slide with, with all of you, I will give to Dr. Israel later. You can look at the, uh, the link down there. And then like I said, uh, we are part of the East Asia Observatory. Uh, and then any of the East Asia Observatory discovery will be linked to us. So we've been linked with the the black hole image as well as the okay so to me this is very important this the, the, the community wants this so uh, hopefully in iraq also uh, if we get involved we can help the community okay, inspire the community for taking up science in future and then we have a lot of trainings and workshops uh the first webl workshop was done in november 2019 and then we have other trainings so you can see the one on the right there top right and bottom right are all done online Okay, so we actually have for the ALMA workshop, we have a participant from Iraq, okay? But the participant didn't turn up, I think. 
So, uh, but anyway, the big point here is that we will have more of this workshop. Hopefully, some of you can join also. Okay, uh, hopefully, we, it's a it's a mutual benefit, especially on your side. Okay, so the last slide here, just a little bit of fun. So this is to show in my lab here. Uh, Dr. Israq knows uh, most of people here. So this is one of our party, okay, well, festival celebration. Uh, another one, okay, uh, in our pantry. Uh, this is a farewell for one of our research assistant, uh, Abdul Aziz from Somalia, who's on the left here, far left. And uh, Dr. Israq, is there. So this is one of our activity where we go field work for the interference uh, survey. Okay, bring the fun, uh, the project student and also with Dr. Yeah, Prof Taha is there at the back in the red color shirt. And we have some fun. This is project student, undergraduate, literate. Dr. Abbas is here also. Uh, this is farewell for uh, Professor Zaino, the co-founder of our lab. But he's still active with us, uh, still attending our meetings online and so on. Um, yeah, so I just want to show that uh, our lab, although we we publish a lot of work and uh, all of them hardworking, including Dr. Isra, we also have uh, many uh, other activities uh, to feel like a family. Okay, so anyway, so I hope uh, I have uh, shared some good knowledge for you, okay? Uh, so, uh, I would like to say terima kasih, which is thank you in uh, in the in Malaysian language. And uh, yeah, so that's that's all from me. So if you have any question now, please ask, or you can also ask me later through my email there. So you can also visit my website there. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Dr. Zamari. Thank you so much for your interesting presentation. So for audience, uh, mic is on. If uh, anyone have a question or comment for Dr. Zani, please ask. Mic is on, please. workshop in this page here uh, for research when we did the workshop there's many participants all over the world uh, we have the one from Greece a uh, few of them they're very very um, uh, very very talkative they, they ask a lot of questions so they'll be involved so um, I think uh, the uh, advantage of um, online uh, teaching okay you can get more people okay for classes you can only have the people in the classes and if you do conference uh, very limited people will come okay so um, yeah for me uh, I like I like uh, online classes that that's my uh, opinion. All right, thank you, doctor. Actually, for audience, the link of uh, attendance, you can find it in chat, please. I, I think we are done here. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, yes, uh, actually, on behalf of my institute, Institute of Technology, Middle Technical University, I would like to say thank you so much for being here uh, this evening and share with us very interesting, you know, talk. Um, hope uh, we can, you know, uh, see you again. And we have very nice presentation again in, in Middle Technical University. Uh, I don't know. What I, uh, so for audience, I uh, I hope that all of you have uh, you know nice time and you 
uh, you you gain some you know new information about radio astronomy. So thank you so much for all of you, and see you again. Thank you. Okay, so we go. Oh, all right. Thank you, Doctor. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.